Hey everybody, Mike Naso here from IPR365.com with the latest on Tropical Storm Emily, the fifth tropical storm of the 2011 Atlantic hurricane season. And when we take a look out there today, you can definitely see as night begins to fall here, Tropical Storm Emily uh, is the main feature. It's rather ill-defined at this point in time, even though on the satellite it looks to be getting a bit better organized. It would be interesting uh, if the center, which is officially here in the Eastern Caribbean, uh, is trying to reform a bit further to the south and uh, more within this ball of convection that would actually make it look a heck of a lot more symmetric if I told you the center was here that would be uh, very very foreboding but when I tell you that the center is actually here uh, doesn't look all that hot now does it and this is what we're going to be discussing because this storm is truly what makes tropical cyclone tracking uh, a very uh, difficult task to try and do Here's the latest on Tropical Storm Emily as of 11.15 p.m. Uh, not 11.15. It could be 11.15. I don't know why I said 15. Uh, it's because it's 15.5 north. That's probably why. As of 11 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, it was at 15.5 north, 62.9 west. Winds were only 40 miles an hour, gusting to 50, so it's very weak. It's moving west. Okay, and this motion and speed will be important west at about 17 miles an hour, 16, 17 miles an hour, 1,006 millibars, the pressure very, very high. It is forecast, I should note, to uh, strengthen gradually into a moderate to strong tropical storm, make landfall sometime Wednesday uh, in uh, areas of the Dominican Republic on the island of Hispaniola, cross over and then leave into the Bahamas, and then spend Thursday, Friday, and Saturday over the Bahamas strengthening in a hurry into a potent Category 1 hurricane. Now, this is the forecast, but there is so much uncertainty with it that it's almost useless saying what is anticipated because we really don't know what's anticipated with track or intensity because they go hand in hand. And let me try and explain to you what I mean by that. By the way, I should note we do have the Tropical Storm Watch out of course, for areas of Hispaniola, the islands, here everybody on alert with whatever impacts Emily will bring. Now, if Emily decides to remain very poorly organized, uh, it could dissipate. We've seen it happen before, open up into a wave, maybe dissipate for good, maybe come back later. Now, if Emily organizes a little bit into a decent tropical storm, but still ragged and still trying to really get itself together, and hits Hispaniola, it might weaken, uh, the convection might wane a little bit towards the center and not really uh, develop much, but then you'd likely see very deep convection on the outer bands, and then once it left, a burst of deep convection and a very quick strengthening trend. If Emily were to somehow become a hurricane before it hits Hispaniola, or even a uh, very, very well-organized tropical storm, then the island could have much more of an impact on the intensity and it would have a harder time strengthening when it came out. Uh, it, it's so much uh, in the air right now that it's anybody's guess at this point. Also, as far as the track, if Emily takes the northern edge of this track, it's probably a lot stronger and more likely to turn out. If it takes the southern edge of this track, it could also be a lot stronger, but then it would probably be dealing with land masses to weaken it more dramatically. Uh, if it takes the middle of this track as its forecast is strengthening a bit, weakening a bit, and then strengthening a bit more as it leaves over the Bahamas. But it's really anybody's guess at this point in time, and that's why everybody has to be on alert with this one. Here's the model guidance with it. Now, if you remember about 18 hours ago, the models uh, that had been trending north shifted dramatically west, some even showing a bend west under a rebuilding uh, ridge. However, tonight they are shifting back to the east. And I find it funny that when we have a system so weak and ill-defined moving straight west at 17, these models are so liberal in saying how far north the system's going to go. Uh, if we had a major hurricane strengthening quickly right now, and we had uh, enough of the poleward motion to push it out, then I could see that. I don't see it with an ill-defined tropical storm. I can't see that happening. Nevertheless, we're going to have to watch these models, but again, we were talking, you know, that it was going to turn and turn and turn and turn, and here we are again. So how far west is this thing going to get before we see that northward motion 
and this is what's really going to cause a lot of people some headaches. You can see the Canadian model, which I'll show you, does take it into the Keys after going over Haiti and Cuba, and then into the Panhandle. The UK met pretty similar to that. The consensus is we're a little bit to the north of the Hurricane Center. They're on the southern edge of the guidance. They might be thinking, well, if it's moving west at 17 and so weak, uh, should we really follow the consensus? And, and they m might be onto something because nobody knows what to follow with Emily at this point. Here's Emily on the latest IR, and you can see the center officially over in this region here is not looking all that great, but it does have uh, convection firing here over the system, so even if it's not directly over the top of the circulation, at least the convection is firing, and that is a sign that it's trying to at least hold its own, if not strengthen a little bit. And we're going to watch that very carefully. You can see the radar out of uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. You do see those outer rain bands, and this is going to be a problem here as some of these rain showers are already coming into the island, and you can see the turning there evident that we definitely have a tropical cyclone, but not a very well-organized one. Now I showed you the Canadian model, and here's the uh, longer range, and you can see it takes it right into the Gulf of Mexico here and strengthens it. Uh, that would be a track similar to maybe what we saw with uh, Dennis in 2005, although a little bit further north and much weaker, of course. But nevertheless, it's, it's really up in the air because we're not seeing uh, the model guidance really give us any sure sign of what's going to happen four to five days out. We do have uh, troughiness off the east coast. We do have a very strong ridge of high pressure over the eastern part of the United States. That's why we've had these heat waves like we've had whenever you get these ridges, very clear-cut weather underneath them. The indication is that there's going to be some sort of poleward motion, but some of the models here are showing that there's going to be enough ridging building back in to where Emily could get pushed on westward. Now, whether or not that would be just a temporary bump west and then back off to the northeast, or whether it would be a complete turn into Florida, let's say. Don't know at this point in time, but if you live in South Florida, you should, and even Central Florida, be getting your hurricane plan in action now, because we're talking by this weekend, uh, we could have a hurricane bearing down on the central and southeast coast of Florida. Uh, but then again, everything's up in the air with this one. It really is. I can't remember the last time we really had a system that was this difficult to have uh, any prediction on. I really, off the top of my head, um, maybe Ike, when it was a hurricane way out in the Atlantic uh, three years ago, and the model guidance was turning it, and then it was pushing into Florida, and then it ended up over Cuba and the Caribbean. Maybe Ike would have been the last time, but even Ike was already a major hurricane. This thing is an ill-defined tropical storm, and no doubt it's going to cause us problems. Here's the latest wind shear profile. You can see it does have this anti-cyclone aloft, this little safe harbor. This is favorable for development, although it might be a little bit displaced to the south of where the actual center of uh, Emily is. And if Emily's center is up here and you have these winds spiraling into it, that could cause some wind shear, and I think that's kind of what we're seeing right now with the storm. As a matter of fact, if I go back to that loop I just showed you a few minutes ago, you could see that we actually had some signs of that going on here with these winds blowing inward towards where the center is. That could mean it's a little displaced, but if, again, the center is reforming further south down here, then we'd be in business for some serious strengthening. Um, but there's no indication right now, at least, that that is taking place. Nonetheless, it should carry a favorable environment along with it, and if it passes Hispaniola and comes out intact, uh, we could have some serious strengthening because these water temperatures are very hot, especially as you get into the Bahamas towards Florida. I wouldn't be surprised if it did take a track as predicted, uh, then uh, we had a Category 1 hurricane bearing down on Florida. If Emily was a hurricane, it could be cranking up at a pretty good clip by the time it gets towards where it would be at least in danger of making landfall. So this is going to be a thing to watch over the next several days, and you can stay tuned here to IPR, and we'll keep an eye on it for you. In the eastern Pacific, we do have Hurricane Eugene as of 11 p.m. Eastern Time. is at 13.2 north, 106.8 west. Winds were only 75 miles an hour, gusting to 90. Moving west-northwest at 12, 990 millibars. Some minimal hurricane forecast to reach 100 miles an hour, but stay well out in the open Pacific Ocean. Taking a look at Eugene at this hour, you can definitely see that the system's trying to get a little better organized there, and it's not been able to pop out an eye yet, but if it does then the strengthening could take it upwards 
of a Category 2 hurricane. That's what it's looking like. I did want to note Typhoon Mufia in the Western Pacific has strengthened. Clearly, you can see on this satellite loop, the eyewall replacement cycle and it underwent yesterday is completely finished, and we now have a well-defined eye, and it looks very formidable as it will bend westward here and strengthen into a Category 4 typhoon again. All interest in the Western Pacific should keep a close eye on this system. Once again, I'm Mike Naso from IPR 365 with the latest on Tropical Storm Emily. I'll see you next time.